So the next piece of the equation in mixing our drums is adding in some reverb to create some ambience to make the drums feel like they're in a physical space. Now, I'm using all synthesized and sampled hits in my drums here, so when they were created, they don't have any natural acoustic space around them. It's the equivalent of close miking. There's virtually zero acoustic ambience around them, and that sounds very, very unnatural unless we treat it with some reverb. So in this case, we're going to use Universal Audio's EMT250 uh, reverb, which is, uh, in my opinion, it's the most beautiful sounding reverb I've ever heard for shorter sounds. Um, I love using it on my percussion. It was actually, the hardware unit was the world's first entirely electronic digital reverb that was invented. And they have done a beautiful recreation of it on the UAD platform. So in the drum rack, we don't even need to use a send and return into our main track. The drum racks actually have built-in send and returns because they're virtually like a little mixer built into Ableton. So what I'm going to do is just expand my chains area here and now I see a button here for my returns area. If I click that, you'll see I have the ability to drop in a return effect directly into the drum rack interface. So I'm going to grab my EMT250, throw it down here, and let's do a quick little walk through the interface. Very, very simplistic interface. Um, the, one of the actually the beautiful things I like about the hardware was you only had a few choices you didn't have infinite possibilities like today's software-based digital reverbs where you can get lost in there for weeks just tweaking stuff. You, once you go down that rabbit hole, sometimes you can, you can be down there for way too long. So the beautiful aspect of this plugin is that it's so simple. So because we're using this as a, as a send and return, the very first thing we need to do is take the dry-wet parameter and slam it all the way to the top because we're going to mix it in with the send controls. So we want it 100% wet. Now... This unit actually has a couple of other different settings. It starts off by default on its reverb setting, which we're going to use, but it also has a bunch of different other types of reverb-ish, delay-ish type of effects. We're not going to cover those in detail. Uh, we're going to use the main reverb here because we're treating our snare and hi-hats for some acoustic space. The first gigantic lever here is for reverb time. Now, the fact that we're using this on percussion, I'm going to start off with the reverb time relatively low. And before we start tweaking stuff, I just want you guys to actually hear this reverb so you can hear what it sounds like. So in order to apply the reverb, we need to make sure our sends area is active. And you can see we have a little send parameter next to each one of our percussion types here. So in this case, I'm going to start off with applying it to the snare. And I'm just going to bump the snare send up. So it's going to put some signal through the reverb. So if we solo the snare, you should be able to hear this now. So that's with the reverb, here's no reverb. Totally dry. So let's bump up our send amount to the reverb. And then go back to the EMT 250. So like I said, the very first lever controls the reverb decay time. So higher up on the lever will result in a longer decay time. Now this is not a super, super, super long reverb. So uh, again, and because we're using it on percussion, we're going to want to go for lower values here. I want it to decay before the next snare hit comes in for sure. That's about good. Now the next lever here controls the EQ and damping curve of the low end. So this one starts at uh, basically 300 hertz and below. And what it does is controls how much low frequency content will be in your reverb tail. So these are multiples of the original lever value here. So if we're on one for the lever, this is on 0.5, it's going to be half the length of the original reverb tail. So the more we turn this lever up, the more amount of low frequency content we're going to have in the reverb tail. Now, in this case, because I'm applying it to um, my snare and my upper end, I don't really want any low frequency content in here. So I'm going to put the lever all the way down in the bottom position. Next lever up is very similar to this, except it's on the high end. This actually uh, controls from 6,000 hertz up 6K. And again, it works in a very similar way where it's a multiple of the original signal. So um, I'm going to earball this one and just listen to how it sounds. So you can hear with the lever at the bottom, it's a much darker sounding reverb. 
And with the lever all the way at the top, it sounds much brighter. You can hear all that high frequency content in there. Just have another listen to that. I like it with the lever in this position right here. Now, the last lever on here is for pre-delay time. So pre-delay is the amount of time that will elapse before the effect starts to kick in. And in this case, when we push the lever up, it's going to give us a longer pre-delay, 60 milliseconds in this case. Now, the reason why I'm going to use a, a longer pre-delay in here is because my track's running at 100 BPM. There's a lot of time and space in between my beats. And by pushing this lever up, not only am I going to make my um, reverb delay to kick in a little bit, it's going to make the room sound bigger. And in this case, because my beats are so far apart, it's a slower track, I want that bigger room sound to the percussion. So I'm going to top this out and uh, give it another listen. Versus no pre-delay. You can hear a slight delay between when the initial attack of the snare comes in and when the reverb kicks, which is the effect I'm looking for in this case. So now let's unsolo the snare and listen to this in the mix. Now you'll notice that um, we also have some hi-hats in here and the hi-hats are sounding way too dry as well. So I want to add a little bit of reverb to the hats too. Maybe add a little more reverb to the hats. And let's listen to that all in the mix now. Now once I get my reverb entirely dialed in, uh, I'm able to make some global edits to it. Like say for example, I want to bring the entire level of the reverb down because what I'm going to be doing next after this is adding some tape saturation and compression to the entire drum bus. And that will tend to accentuate the audibility of the reverb in there. So I might want to tame the reverb a little bit when I start to add some compression in. So if I want to dial back the reverb, I have the volume of the reverb on its own right here. So if I want to globally dial back the amount of reverb rather than going in here and dialing back each send, I can do that with the volume chain here on my return track for the reverb.